Okay, by request, it's time for the unpacking video, unpacking from the Tatten Back, Western Tatten Back 2020 ride, show you what worked, what didn't work, what we needed, what we didn't need, how come I packed so much stuff for this ride in this configuration using this giant loop Siskiyou pannier bags here with the Rally Raid rack support, the giant loop uh, dry bag, I think that's a, a Rogue River bag. An extra heavy duty jacket, a tank bag, two tank panniers here. We'll go through all of these and see what's in there, what added up all the weight. But first, let's go through what I wore for the ride. First off, starting off with the helmet. That's a shoey dirt bike helmet. I like my open face helmet to get the air in there and the GoPro mount on top. Then I picked up a new pair of the Climb Mojave pants. These are the lightweight vented Mojave pants that help keep you cool. They worked really well. Three pairs of eyeglasses. They're all shot. Throw them away. Free knife from the uh, show there. Ogeo flight vest. We'll get into that for a, in a minute. Here is the icon mesh af jacket picked this jacket up just for this ride super mesh i mean you'll get a sunburn through that through that lightweight mesh but it'll keep you cool heat was the biggest issue on this ride hot 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 some rain some cold but mostly heat the mesh jacket still has some crash protection built into it elbows and back mesh af jacket worked good okay down to the feet where's them boots this <laughs> this was an issue what do you wear to keep your feet protected and yet comfortable on a super long ride like the tat back 2020 well i've tried uh adventure the forma adventure boots before and they are very comfortable they're very lightweight but they don't offer a lot of foot protection if you drop this bike on your foot it will break wearing those boots but these fox boots the fox motocross boots they're simply just too hot you just i just baked my feet wearing these boots uh, throughout much of the ride so like to hear from you guys what do you wear for long distance riding off-road that's going to provide your with true protection and yet not cook your feet the cd boots the expensive cd boots are they are they better at that anyways the fox motocross boots were too hot but offered great protection i did put on some knee protection underneath the climb pants using these uh liet knee uh, protectors here of course the shin slides down into the front of the boot there all right on to the ogeo flight vest unlike a backpack the ogeo flight vest provides balanced weight you can put items in the front of the vest to offset the weight of the water in the back of the vest and then the back of the vest is uh what at least two liters of water that you're gonna need to be sipping on all day long as you're heading down the dusty trail let's see what's inside the vest Inside here is your water bag, which you're going to want to freshen up every day. And if you stop at a gas station, go to the uh, the soda fountain and fill it up with ice. That's a great way to go on a hot day. Over here is the InReach Explorer tracker. This keeps folks at home posted as to your progress. And the InReach, Delorme InReach, now owned by Garmin, you can also send text messages to home as well. And of course, there's the SOS button, which will summon a 911 call via GPS satellites so that you do not have to rely on cell phone signal to send out a 911 call using your InReach Explorer. This does have a monthly charge of about, I think it's about 35 bucks a month to keep that activated. Now, I like how they call this the flight vest. It looks like a helicopter flight vest, but it's really <laughs> a Mavic Mini drone flying vest. Let me show you this. Here's the tiny little Mavic Mini drone, which gave us those epic drone shots during the ride. And it's so small, lightweight, and portable. It's just perfect for this kind of an adventure. Here's the controller for the Mini Mavic drone. 
you thread the little control sticks on from there onto here, extend the antennas, and install one more item. Here it is. This is a Apple iPod that I use as a screen so I can see what I'm filming with the drone. Along with the drone, you get the Fly More Pack includes three batteries and a spare set of props. So here's the other two batteries, third battery in the drone. Everything, all the electronics here on this ride recharge off of the bike using this USB plug right here. Here she is uh, ready to, in the ready to fly mode with the Apple product attached to the controller. And on the trail, I just wrapped it up in some small towels like this to keep the dust out of it and then wrapped it up in a garbage bag as I found out in the rain with the vest here, it's gonna get wet. So the drone stored in here, the iPod stored in here and the spare battery stored in here. And here we've got a first aid kit, some extra wipes, another uh, helmet uh, light, something to check your tire pressure with, which is something you're going to want to keep uh, tabs on. We should have some extra tools in here. Another knife and a universal plier set with various screwdrivers and that sort of thing in these little pockets here. If you can keep one of these two big pockets empty, that's a great place to store a sandwich or some food at the end of the day that you want to take back to camp with you. Here's the neck scrunchie. And then this side, I generally kept all the charging. <laughs> when the Blanco Lirio Mobile Command Post goes mobile, it needs a whole array. I need to bring a wire strip with me to keep everything charged up. Now that's if you're in a hotel room and you got AC power and you can plug all the all of your electronics in and get it all charged up at once. Here's the makeup department. And uh, but on the trail, you just take the cords off the USB port and charge everything off of the bike. You'll have to take turns as you only got two USB ports to work with. So GoPro charger, charger for the inReach, charger for the drone, charger for the iPod charger for the cell phone. Over here we got a way to inflate a set of tires, an emergency water drinking straw, more straps, this little handy dandy backpack which Jenny talked to me into buying, an ultralight little day pack, again another alternative to putting in groceries as you leave the final stop for the day for camp. But you're gonna wear that on top of this, on top of this vest, that's kind of, well, I didn't try that. Uh, map, definitely need a good lighter, a good strong lighter, especially for the, and what in the hell was that? I don't even know. <laughs> Some old beef jerky. So those are the contents of the Ogeo flight vest. This pocket I generally kept empty. You can put some trail mix in there. Just whatever you put in there is going to be pushing against your back if you've got stuff on the back of your seat. Okay, let's move on to the next two items. The big jacket with some things in it and what's inside the rogue bag. That held on with the rocks straps. These things are great. They are elastic on this end. They loop around real easy on that end. And they strap down nicely on this end. Anchored down right to there. The heavy duty jacket, only used this when it got to really rain in there in Colorado. Didn't use this much, maybe once or twice. Dual function, use the pockets to carry your fishing gears. So let's see what's inside. Wadded up with these uh, giant loop straps. And you can always use these straps for other functions. Unloosen it and voila, here it is. Part of the top secret fishing gear right there. You want to bring a green woolly booger just in 
general purpose trout fishing rig for anywhere in the western United States. And right in here, another small selection of flies. I would recommend more um, of the caddis flies and the mosquito flies. And more woolly boogers, you're going to lose a few. Inside the dry bag, I keep everything I need for my bedding material nice and warm and dry. And that includes when you get off the trail, you're going to want a clean, dry t shirt as opposed to the stinky, sweaty one you've been riding in all day. A pair of thermals to keep you cozy and warm. And a clean, dry pair of socks to get out of those stinking socks you've been riding on all day. My new Colorado tin cup, I decided to keep it inside the bag to keep it a little bit cleaner on the road. For a sleeping bag, the North Face Cat's Meow rated at 20 degrees. That means you'll survive 20 degrees. You will not be comfortable, even if it gets down to freezing. So you back that up with this Thermalite fabric reactor. It's like a sock that you wear inside the sleeping bag, traps your body heat. It greatly increases the thermal efficiency of the sleeping bag. And if you're still cold on top of that, just throw this big heavy jacket on top of you like a blanket and you're set. Now, as far as air mattresses go, I thought I could get away with a lightweight, small thermarest that was very uncomfortable. Harold Cecil at Giant Loop in Bend, Oregon saved my life by having one of these in stock. Big Agnes uh, Q-Core SLX inflatable mattress. You don't need all the pump and all the rest of the apparatus. You can quickly and easily pump this up by hand, so to speak, <laughs> with your mouth. That is an insulated mattress, comfortable lifesaver right there. So I ended up with both of these mattresses with me. This was inadequate. A inflatable pillow to back up. This, this was the pillow that I brought with me on the trip. But again, Jenny Morgan talked me into buying this inflatable pillow, and she was right. That's very, very comfortable. It's much smaller than this and lighter as well. When also when you for the clothing when you go to bed you're gonna want a um, some kind of a ski cap to keep your head warm. Also inside the rogue bag I keep these two long items: the tent poles to the tent, and there is your Cabela's Stowaway Six fly rod. Super lightweight, great working fly rod to go out there and catch some fish while you're on the trail. That's everything inside the rogue bag. This is a possible's pouch, which I picked up from Harold at Giant Loop, held on with a couple of pronghorn straps. This anchors this bag to the, to the rear of the bike. I'm afraid to look at what's in here because I've been using this as my garbage bag at the end of each day, and I didn't empty it. And sure enough, some garbage that I forgot to throw out at the last stop. Pack it in, pack it out. Also, when you're going to these backcountry places of hospitality, don't unload all your trash on those guys either because they have very limited garbage capability. They got to drive 60 miles just to haul your trash away from their place. So wait till you get back into town into a gas station and unload your trash there. Okay, now let's see what's in the panniers. You can get into these panniers with your dry bag on top. It's quite a bit easier with it off, but you can do this with the, with the um, bag on top. Here's one of the deluxe features that makes this packing system so extra large. Uh, Helinox Camp Chair. Just love this thing. Great at the end of a long day of riding. What I typically start with is get the get the lightweight crummy tarp out, throw that on the ground, set that chair up, and then begin to set up camp. A giant loop dry bag full of clean clothes in here, keeping them dry, and you can compress these sacks with these little air vents here. What else we got? A uh, pair of goggles. A pair of goggles that I thought I needed, but we ended up never using. I just went with glasses. I really prefer the sunglasses. Two pair of sunglasses. It keeps the air flowing. You're riding side by side to avoid the dust, or else you're taking major spacing to avoid the dust. A dark pair of polarized glasses during the day, and a light pair 
of yellow glasses for this time of day as the light begins to fade you're going to want a pair of basically target shooting glasses to help you see the trail and one clean pair of pants pair of heavy duty car hearts that added quite a bit of bulk to this load which i did use because i needed something to wear when i got to wichita a pair of river shoes like that lightweight river shoes great for wading when you're going fishing my other tin cup which has been since been upgraded and replaced with the colorado tin cup and then i had some uh, knee high socks for wearing underneath these knee braces but it was just too dang hot i did not end up using those these knee braces were comfortable enough just strapped right straight to your skin in this other dry bag, I stored the rest of the tent, the tent itself, the ground tarp, and the cover. This, this is the solo stove. This is one of the single greatest <laughs> advancements in camping technology that if you can afford the weight on a bulkier setup like this, this is where the Siskiyou panniers come in so nice. You can take luxuries like the solo stove with you and have a nice cheery campfire no matter where you go. Even if the fire restrictions are pretty tight, if they still allow stoves, you can get away with this. It's, it's a very, very safe. It burns on anything, and you've seen the pictures of the thing work. And inside of here, I can store my coffee and oatmeal. Yeah, here's the cover to the tent. And a pair of stinky clothes. <laughs> when you get to these end of the line of these clothes, you might want to just consider throwing them away, burning them, whatever, get your old clothes, use those, toss them as you go. Smooth the lightweight. You may not even want to bother washing those when they come back. It's, oh, and the silky big boy saw. We did not have to use this. Well, we used it a little bit, maybe chipping up some firewood, but fortunately we didn't have to use this on the trail, but there were several locations where our trail did have some downfall on it. it. We would have been totally stuck had we not had this if just one of those trees was down and in our way and it can be easily cut out of the way with the silky big boy. So though we didn't use this on this trip, bring it. I'm darn glad I brought it. Um, now, if you're just sticking to the Trans-American Trail and the dirt roads, you probably don't need it. But if you're going to go do some trail riding like we did, you're going to want that. And some tent pegs. These forward pouches are real convenient for bringing extra water or beer to camp at the end of the day. Bringing your chain guard, storing that in there. And in this pouch here, we've got the extra fuel canister. And here's how we get that coffee in the morning, the jet boil stove. That boils water in just a minute or less. Really efficient jet boil stove, all self-contained inside of there. Get your hot coffee and or oatmeal in the morning. And that stores in that pouch right there. And that wraps up what's on the rear of the bike. You got to set your preload on your shock to handle this weight and this load. And I still manage to bottom this thing out quite a bit with this load. The Garmin 610T GPS, hardwired to the bike, worked absolutely great. We're using the City Navigator maps on here, and with the tracks that Jenny has and her experience and knowledge on this GPS just made the navigation absolutely simple. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Actually, we should just get Jenny to teach you how to run the GPS, because she's such an expert at running the GPS on something like the Trans-American Trail. The most common question is, the tracks you buy from Sam Carrero are designed to go one way from east to west. Can you go the other direction? Well, sure. And there's some easy, simple tips you can use with a GPS to turn, well, not to turn the tracks around, but to navigate them from west to east as opposed to east to west. This is a uh, Lucy light, it inflates. It's a solar powered camp light. They're available at most uh, big five type stores. 
for about 15 bucks or less. Great camp light. Charge it up in there while you're underway. There's the B for Blanco Lirio ball cap. Here's some uh, more studio equipment I want to show you in a minute that helps make all that vlogging, micro vlogging from the trail possible. Here's another little tiny pouch. So your personal gear. I brought this bicycle wrench with me. This was handy to have, the three-way hex wrench. Chris Mikowski, a spork from um, Human Gear. And my friend Chip, uh, Chris Mikowski, the CEO and chief bottle washer of Human Gear. This is his design, a real <laughs> authentic, durable spork all the other spork designs just don't get it his works get you one we found that in rei i couldn't find my original one there chris so that saved the day another headlamp your personal gear some more coffee toothpaste toothbrush uh a, a, a leader a spare leader for your fishing line ibuprofen this ride brought to you by ibuprofen you're going to want that Pen, pencil, extra lighter, more glasses all torn up, floss, dental floss, that sort of thing. All your personal gear inside the tank bag. Spare master link. And some spare fuses in there. In these bags, we did not fortunately have to use anything out of these bags. These bags contain a spare inner tube. I think I brought a... A 19 inch spare inner tube just one spare inner tube that's a 17 inch rear and a 19 inch front you bring out a spare 19 inch tube you can cram it in there if you have to in the event of an emergency and in here is a more tire changing tools basic tools some slime everything you need to change a tire including a trail stand i think it's enduro star trail stand which allows you to pick up the rear wheel of the bike and change the rear wheel without a center stand Note two also, I removed my Scorpion, lightweight Scorpion exhaust and put back on my stock exhaust. I'm really glad I put the stock exhaust back on just for the quietness of it compared to the Scorpion. Jenny still had the Scorpion on her bike and I could hear it all day long. But the main problem was the Scorpion pipe tended to smoke the bottom of my bags. So with the stock pipe and the giant loop um, standoff there, your bags are protected. But I really like the quietness of the stock pipe over the loud pipe. One advantage of this pipe is the weight savings. Between that pipe, by removing the weight of this pipe and installing that pipe, you've bought yourself the weight difference of this Rally Raid engine guard. So 6,300 miles, 30 days, the bikes perform flawlessly. Zero issues with the bikes. I bought one new rear tire at Topaz. I think I got the sticker on there. Topaz Motorsports in Trinidad, Colorado. Great place. Or was that Colorado Springs? I think it was Colorado Springs. That's right. Yeah, Topaz was out of tires because of the COVID. So we had to go up to the, the place in Colorado Springs. Another great dealer. They put you to the front of the line. They un they are on the Trans-American Trail. They know what it's all about. So they get you in and get you back on the trail real quick. Other than that, it was hot. <laughs> it was long. It's not something you want to go out and just go do on a lark. I've got some video clips to share with you about some folks we met on the trail that decided they would just go out on a lark and they were crashing their way across America and having a heck of a tough time of it. So... Get you some experience. The packing organization takes <laughs> days, maybe a week or two of fiddling around, deciding what to bring and what to not to bring. And that's half of the fun of the whole thing, getting that all sorted out. So that's what we brought, Trans-American Trail, Western TAT, Tattenback 2020. See you here.